Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today on Distro Wars, we're going to be talking about Dev1 versus Debian. These operating systems are pretty close to identical. Uh, in fact, there's designs to be that way. So what is Dev1? Well, Dev1 is simply Debian without System D. Now, I have yet to be given a seriously compelling reason not to use uh, system D, but for those people that do not want to use it, Dev1 is certainly a release. It is designed to be as close to Debian as conceivably possible, to be cross-compatible, to be um, easily the same systems, except it has SysV or OpenRC instead of it. I might have said that wrong. Um, head on, on over to the um, to the OS page. This is the operating system page. Basically, they are indicating here their, their task is to be pretty much identical. So there's code name. Uh, this is actually, this is the older information is out here. The, we are today on this test. We are the absolute latest version as of today, which my download says it's a beta, but... Since it's a net installer, it might have installed the full version. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can dis discern that. We may or may not. So Linux kernel is probably going to be uh, different than this. The initialization systems. During the install, you can choose the initialization. Do you want sysv or openrc? So this is really your only differences. Most everything else is pretty much the same. Default is XFCE. We also have Cinnamon, KDE, LXQT, Mate, and then there are some other ones as well. I know Debian gives us the option also to install GNOME. I do not remember if I saw that on the Dev1 install. Uh, I did use the Net installer for both of these, and uh, the Debian Net installer was installed a couple weeks ago when I did another one, but I don't think anything has changed from there. And uh, I believe since it's a net installer, it's going to get us everything as completely up to date as possible. So you just head on over to their download tab on the website and grab the various mirrors that you are looking for. And uh, when you head on into the mirror, you can see uh, there's different, uh, different categories. So uh, if we go on into this is the latest. Uh, and then over here, you can grab the installer ISO. You can grab a minimal live. There's a desktop. I grabbed a different one. I, I grabbed a net installer. I'm not sure where it was. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do have one. No, that's not it. Anyway, I did find it. Uh, maybe things have changed since I downloaded it this afternoon. But anyway, um, I'm using a net install. Of course, I came over to uh, Debian.org and I grabbed the uh, net installer for this as well. So if you just hit your getting Debian tab, there's a variety of different ways. Don't get too lost in it. In this case here, since I did not need a graphical user interface, I just did the net install. Although the net installer for Debian does give us a graphical user interface installer, Dev1 does not. It just kind of gives us uh, just the, uh, the terminal based installer. Either way, that was fine. I did not have any serious problems one way or the other. So now what we are going to do is let's go ahead and we will boot up Dev1. It still says here Debian on the installation. So I said it is pretty, uh, pretty much the same. I do believe I just saw kernel 4.8, but it flashed really, really hard. Uh, so we'll kind of see what uh, what is going on here. So it is in the start sequence. When I first booted this up right after the installation, it did boot full screen. Uh, this time it looks like it may not be booting full screen. Not sure what is up with that. Enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. So there it goes. Now it jumped full screen, at least in theory. <clears throat> see what happens when it finally loads. All right, we are loading full screen. I did install Cinnamon on both. I made all of the options the same. We basically used default system options. We installed Cinnamon, and we did. Uh, I did not install a print uh, printers and stuff, printer support, just because, hey, we're in virtual machines for testing. So let's go ahead and first have a look at the system here. Uh, let's go ahead first and see if there's any difference in the uh, system usage. So system monitor... We have, it looks like we are using 775 megabytes of RAM in this system. Both systems are set up the same. 
And let's go over here and have a look at what our kernel happens to be. It is giving me a Bluetooth indicator, although there is no Bluetooth device on this system. Wow, that's taking a long time to boot up a terminal. Terminal, boot up terminal. Let's see if it actually boots up a terminal. Well, while well, it's booting up a terminal, let's see what else is installed. Basic, um, you know, just some basic tools. Uh, archive manager, calculator, disks, uh, education. It looks like we have a LibreOffice. We have a uh, pile of games here. Uh, here is our uh, graphics. We have GIMP. We have Inkscape, uh, Shotwell. We have Firefox, ESR, Thunderbird, Transmission. Let's see what version of LibreOffice we're running. Bersario, Cheese, Rhythmbox, Sound Juicer, Videos, uh, Basic Administration Stuff, and our Basic Platform. Let's go ahead and boot up our System Settings. All right, version of LibreOffice. It looks like we are running 6.1 on LibreOffice. Let's see if there's a spieling cheeker. There is indeed a spieling cheeker on here. Let's go ahead and fix our spelling with that. Is there a synonym checker? It looks as though we do not have synonyms. All right, theming on this is pretty ugly out of the box. That usually happens when you're installing Cinnamon, except for uh, Linux Mint-based operating systems. Uh, but we do have a few other options we can choose from. Not a whole lot, but uh, let's see what we got. Ooh, that's uh, the 1990s called and want their theme back. All right, uh, let's see. We all live in a green submarine, a green submarine. See, it sounds so much better with green submarine, man. We have a couple of themes available, nothing that are uh, seriously good, worth writing home about, but uh, we do actually have a few options there in the event uh, you just want to do something there. Of course, this is Cinnamon, so we can come over here and we can actually download some new themes. So we can go ahead and install a lot of the themes that we want. Oh, uh, look at that, a Windows 10 Lite theme. That looks fun. Let's go ahead and install that. Make this computer the best ever. Windows 10 theme, baby. Let's have a look. Oh, it's eye bleeding. <laughs> Uh, we do have Windows 10 borders. Looks like we do not have Windows 10 themes, uh, Windows 10 uh, colors. That's sad. It's very sad. But we do have Windows 10 most everything else. Yeah, we don't. We don't have. We don't have Windows 10 icons. That makes me sad. I'm so sad. But everything else we do have. Everything else does look uh, does look pretty Windows 10. -y. There you go. That's uh, the menu is eye bleeding. That is hard to read. All right, let's see if we can boot up that terminal yet. Terminal, are you alive? Hmm. Looks as though our terminal is not working. Uh, let's go with our system information, see if this will give us information we need. All right, Cinnamon version 3.8.8 .8 for a brand new system. That is quite old. Of course, that is what uh, what Debian has. If you are wanting to run like a Debian and a newer Cinnamon, you're probably going to need to run Linux Mint Debian Edition. We are running Linux kernel 419, a little bit older, but I believe that is an LTS can see everything else that we have here is going to be the same. I did not need to install guest editions for you guys wanting to test it in the virtual machine. Um, and pretty much there's what we have. Um, very, uh, just very simple, very basic. Let's go ahead and see if there's any uh, other desktop backgrounds that they give us. So we have nothing there. If we change it, we can't seem to go back to the default uh, Dev1 version, but we do have just a couple of generic backgrounds. Uh, again, nothing seriously to write home about. But there is our Dev1. So let's go ahead and uh, log on into the Debian and see what Debian is going to bring us. Okay, so uh, here we are and uh, on Debian. Let's go ahead and see if Debian launches full, uh, full screen or not. Uh, not a huge deal if it doesn't. It's very easy to do, but I should have a working terminal in Debian at least. I don't know why we were not able to get the terminal to work. Uh, let's see. This is Debian 10. We did it in installed on the net installer, and uh, that's kind of sad. Oh, look at that. Boom. All right. There we are. Now we got full screen Debian. 
All right, so this guy here, we did not get the Bluetooth manager installed out of uh, out of the box. Let's go ahead and first thing we did on the last one is system monitor. Let's go ahead and have a look at the system monitor here as well. So we are running at 807. Uh-oh, it's running about 50 more megabytes. Oh, maybe it might be up to up, up to 65 or 70, man. So they're about equivalent in size as to how well they are running. I do have a functioning terminal. I see that. That's good news. All right, so applications, we have the uh, archive manager, calculator, disks. We, we are expecting to see everything just about the same here. All right, uh, graphics, we have GIMP, we have Inkscape, we have Firefox ESR. Let's go ahead and have, have a look at what LibreOffice version we're running. Presario, Cheese Rhythm Box, Sound Juicer, Videos. Uh, let's go ahead and have a, let's look at the, uh, about the system as well, system info. All right, so the system info here, we are still running Cinnamon version 3.3, 3.8.8. Uh, 3 uh, we are running Linux kernel 4.19, so the kernel's the same, Cinnamon version's the same, uh, aka old as molasses. Uh, let's see, is my spieling cheeker... Working over here, spilling cheeker seems to be working. Let's go ahead and do uh, do our check on this guy here. Again, no uh, synony um, synonyms and stuff set up, so we'd have to go ahead and do that. Theming looks pretty much the same, so we're basically getting the same overall overarching system. Side of our system settings, let's have a look, see if there's anything different. Uh, of course not, everything's exactly the same. Let's go ahead and add that Windows theme, see how it looks, see if it changes. All right, where's that Windows 10 theme? Where are you, Windows 10 theme? I'm coming for you. All righty, there we go, Windows 10. Windows 10, sad, Windows 10. All right, now we got our Windows 10 menus. All right, everything is set up there. All right, so um, as far as the applications going, uh, Bluetooth manager, so this is installing a Bluetooth manager. We're just not getting an icon for it. Print queue applet, um, I'm not sure why we're getting this. Uh, I did intentionally did not install anything relating to prints, print drivers, or anything like that. Uh, preferred application, everything else is pretty much the same. So we effectively have two very identical systems. The only difference, again, is the initialization system. Do you like system D or do you not like system D? So this is really designed to be the same system, it's just that one of them is running system D, one of them is not. You do have the option sysv or openrc on dev1. Other than that, you're going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to say this one is, in all practical purposes, a tie. If you have an aversion to system D, you have the option of dev1. If you do not have an aversion to system D, hey, Guess what? You got a great system here uh, inside Debian already. They do have very similar options as far as the installation. Uh, they have live installers. They have net installers. You have a variety of desktop operating systems uh, or the desktop environments that you can install. Basically, for all other intensive purposes, your systems are pretty much the same. It's just a different initialization. So take that for whatever it's worth. I'm going to put these guys as an equal tie. They're both very good. They're both completely dedicated to free and open source software. They they both just have the, the stability. Man, they're both going to have a little bit older packages. So some people like the older stuff. Some people don't like the older stuff. That really does depend. It's a, it's a matter of personal preference. We can't say Arch is way better. It has the latest stuff. Sometimes we don't want to run the latest of everything. Sometimes we just need a system that I'm going to buy the computer. I'm going to install it and set it up. And I never want it to change until I buy a new computer. I'm in that camp. I appreciate the people in the other camp who always want the latest stuff. But for me in production, I don't want my system to change every other day when an update happens. So that's my thought. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, is this exactly the same? Is it radical difference? 
let me know in the comments down below. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment, leave us a like, and you can actually help support the channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.